Hello and welcome to the Build Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit. Two model kits, in fact. We're going to finish one kit. We're going to start another. That's how things go here. Uh, I'm going to throw the bear cave look at the side of the moat. Uh, uh, Beats has already done that. Hello, Beats. Welcome, welcome. If you're here, if you're a subscriber, you can throw those emotes in. If you're not a subscriber, you can just throw in uh, other emotes or just say hi. Lastbrook is here. Hi, Lastbrook. I want to get the cave in there, so I'm going to throw the cave in. Uh, Jam is here. Hi, Jam. Uh, again, I want to apologize. I said this in the, the uh, uh, pre-thing when I run uh, my ads. Um, for subscribers, maybe heard it. I am sorry that we started late tonight. Um, that was certainly not my intention, uh, but it did happen. Lord Crashton's here. Hi, Lord Crashton. So we are going to wait for a few more folks to see if a few more folks want to join us before we get to the building building. But yeah, I started a little late tonight. Um, that's unlike me. But yeah, I was on a Zoom call um, that... I about I would say about uh let's let's say uh, eight forty I was like cool well I need to wrap this up uh, I have another thing going on I apologize for that y'all but I know some of y'all are on the west coast and you want to get dinner going so uh, if we could wrap this up that'd be great like I started with the idea that I could wrap up in a couple minutes and that that apparently there were a few things that people were waiting for to be the end of this conversation to get in there. So then at like 9.02, I was like, hey, I actually have to go. Bye-bye. And just his, and it was just, and they were like, oh, yeah, sorry. It's like, yeah. Hey, I got a, I got a thing. I, which, and I'll, I'll be clear, this conversation I was having, which is about possible future work, which would be good for yours truly. Um, was with the understanding that, well, this is when we can talk. Cool. My hard out is right before 9 o'clock Eastern because I have a street. And they were like, no problem. This shouldn't take long. It took long. But that's okay because we're building. We got model kit stuff. We got the Lancer. Uh, the Lancer is body complete here. But we still need to be build the Lance for the Lancer and the shield. And then we need to take this apart into its... Uh, two different components uh, because it, it does it splits in half and there are different forms do they call these things anything I can't remember um, what they call these things here uh, but yeah you can just you could disassemble them into two like ships basically and then you could mix and match them with the arc now I don't own the arc but it is on my Amazon wish list so if you want to pick that up you could you don't have to I'm not asking you to do that, but uh, the arc is something that we could, uh, uh, I could build, and then I can mix and match them. It's kind of neat. It's kind of, it's kind of neat. Anyway, we'll wait a couple minutes. We're gonna get streaming. As I said, we'll start a little late. So while we're waiting here for a minute or two, see if anybody wants to join us. The Lancer. Let's talk about this Lancer. I don't love this kit. I think the colors are fantastic. I think the combination of the maroon and the pink are fantastic. It's mostly this tail. This is poorly constructed. Um, this is the only part that you can see there. That's the connector. It's It falls off all the time. It's not well put together. Also, I understand that these side skirts are important for the transformation, but I think they are too big and bulky and look bad. Uh... Also, it's got this weird big tail thing and then a tiny little backpack, which I guess is important if for when you split in half. But in this case, just doesn't seem great. I would say as far as high grades go, uh, certainly uh, uh, Gundam Cell, yeah. Uh, it's certainly not my favorite kit we've done this year uh, or even, I mean, because the Justice Gundam was the one we did since I'm, it's not even my favorite kit since I moved here. Uh, um, you know, almost a month ago. Um, it is, meh, it's fine. Um, uh, we also, coming up, once we finish this, because we don't have a lot to do with this kit, but we do have to finish it up, we're going to start the DJ. This is the DJ. Um, I learned how, I learned the pronunciation of this wrong. I learned this is the DJ, but it's DJ. Like, hey, DJ. So, if I call it the DJ, I'm sorry. Uh, it's got some cool stuff. Like, it's beam uh, blades. What a... Uh, Naginata. It's beam Naginata. That's pretty cool. I'm into it. Um, uh, 
Uh, that that just seems neat. So that's going to be a thing. Uh, I'm going to hit the old uh, retweet myself here, saying it's time to build. If we have a slow uh, Monday here, a chill Monday, that's okay. I'm all right with a chill Monday. Um, so we'll go to the overhead here for our impulse. Uh, whoop, hide that. And here's the impulse Gundam. As you can see, I'm just going to lay that out so you can see what's going on with the old impulse. Because we're going to work on our Lancer weapon. It's pretty simple. We'll get that going. Um, so, let's see. Again, uh, I apologize for the late start. Uh, it happens now and again, but it, I attempt to avoid it. But yeah, I am uh, I am in contact with some people about doing some work uh, that would be cool and I think people would like. That's the hope, anyway, is that it would be cool and people would like it. You know, that's the, uh, that they would like the work I do. And it's, uh, it's nice because it was a conversation that wasn't just about, like, a job that just pays, which is, you know, great. It is something that I would be interested in doing. Um, and maybe my uh, viewers here, folks that, that like what I do, would also like it. And that's encouraging and fun because I don't mind, you know, hey, work is work you know you, you put your all into it you you, you know you're, you're i'm gonna work hard and get things done but uh, i also would prefer not to uh to i would like to work on something that i'm passionate about and think it's cool you know um let's see what was i gonna say here okay so this goes that combines that goes in like that Later in the in the second hour, we're going to talk about anime. I do want to say up top, and I'll talk about it again um, probably later. Plug it. Uh, my bonus stream this Wednesday, as many of you know, I do a bonus stream every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Just to, like something that's going on with me. Uh, my bonus stream uh, often is games focused. This Wednesday will not be. It will be a live recording uh, of Pat Bear's Anime Club. So the next episode, which would, was going to go up on Monday, I'm going to do live uh, on Twitch. Um, and it'll be my summer, uh, like, it's not roundup, because it's not a wrap-up, because the season is barely begun. But it's enough into the season for me to tell you. So, uh, basically, I'll be talking about all the shows I'm watching. And the nice thing about starting on Wednesday is uh, Diary of Our Days at the Breakwater will be back tomorrow. So, I'll be able to include that. That is one of the shows that was on hiatus and is now returned. Uh, so, I'll be able to help with that. So, we got the Lancer here. We got our weapon. Uh... For, for this, uh, and now I will take a photo of, or no, sorry, now I'll take a uh, build, and then we'll take a photo when it's done of the uh, shield. we got to build the shield. Um, so, yeah, so that's this Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, please consider coming out on Wednesday and check that out. Um, I'll be going through, as I said, all the shows I'm watching, and if there's something that you want to chat about that night, you know, you want to ask, like, hey... We can, we can do that thing. You can be like, hey, uh, I'm watching Rent a Girlfriend. It's actually really good. The thing is, no one has told me that. So I don't I don't have any faith in it. I've seen like a couple clips and it just seems aggravating. So I'm like, uh, I do like romantic comedy things. I don't really like, uh, this is a romantic comedy based on a lie that we told and now we're stuck telling that lie. I don't necessarily love that as a premise for a show. Um, uh, I understand that it's certainly the hallmark of a lot of ro romance shows uh, is uh, we are bound together in this lie that we told and now everything's going to pile on instead of trying to just live with the uh, shame or embarrassment or whatever uh, of just being like, actually, that's, that's a misunderstanding. Here's what's going on. So I'm like, I'm not super uh into uh that premise but yeah i mean if there's shows that people are watching on wednesday because don't tell me that i'm like a fool for not watching this show oh you're not watching the monster girl doctor thing oh you're not watching peter grill like no no i'm not watching either of those they both seem very bad uh, but maybe they're not maybe i'm the fool for not watching it I doubt it. Uh, we are almost done with this kit. We could have finished this up on Saturday. I guess I could have stuck around on Saturday to finish it up, but I didn't want 
to do that. I didn't want to go long on Saturday just to do this. Figured we'd do it here. And then we'd have the, the time to dork about to figure out the transformations. Also, uh, this has a, a weapon from the uh, the impulse uh, high grade. So you could make a gun if you wanted to. But this is the Lancer, so we're not going to like build it. But I appreciate that it includes all the components for that weapon because they were just on this sheet. Um, that is a common thing with buying something from the build line, the build fighters line, um, or build divers. All of these shows, uh, cause they're all similar. Um, you're getting pieces from a previous like kit, like components from the thing that it's inspired by often. If that kit has come out, it's weird. Uh, we built uh what did we build the uh the thing that was based on the MK the the Mach three, uh we built something pretty recently and it had pieces that high grade hasn't come out yet so but they're feeling like oh it probably is going to because of the kit that that came out that was pretty neat um all right so what we gonna do here so we do this no it's actually this yeah. Do that there, and all right. Well, well, we'll start moving on our DJ. DJ, see, I already did it. As I said, I'm gonna call it a DJ because that's how I learned it back when I was watching uh, Zeta. I thought it was the DJ, but it's the DJ. Uh, all right. So yeah. So I'm gonna take a photo of this, and it's like completed like this. And then we will, uh, we, I'll show you what it looks like when you separate it into its two components, its core fighter and its like bonus fighter thing. But let me get a photo of this looking like that. Uh, yeah, great. So we do that. And now I can show you, of course, the high grades of a modern era here have a couple pages in color. And it happens to be these pages are this part, which doesn't really help much. But okay, so we take this out here. I'm going to take this off. We're going to separate this piece out. Take this, separate this out. We don't need this part. And then we are going to uh, remove these two pieces here. Look at that. We just broke it apart. Oh my God, I broke it. Oh no, my model kit is broken. Which is funny because we did, uh, you may remember, <laughs> on Thursday, I did break this piece here and had to glue it uh but you wouldn't be able to tell that i fucked up pretty bad didn't even get color discolor i uh, didn't get any discoloration i should say color discolor that's not a thing all right so let's do the first part the the we'll do the top here first so we take this we're going to raise up the arms and then we're going to Turn the arms and then raise the arms up. Nope, so it looks like that. Okay. Turn the arms. Turn the arms. Like that. And then it looks like that. Which just looks like this is doing a uh, Superman fly. But it's not doing a Superman fly. And then we take the part of the lance, attach it to the uh, uh, shield, and then that goes here, and if we had the right stand, which we don't, so that goes where the arms are, it clips onto the arms, which is pretty smart. Okay. All right, so now that clips onto the arms. Sorry, took a second here. I'm gonna do this upside down because like that's gonna make my life easier. So this goes here, and yep, and that goes there. Hmm. There we go. Great. So this is the uh, first thing of the flyer here. Oops, fell, fell apart. 
that's fun. Uh, yeah, if we had a stand that would work, there's an adapter uh, piece that comes with it to put this on the stand, which is neat. Um, one thing I, I do want to say here tonight, folks, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, but uh, I haven't tested how it, it looks or works, um, but I have put in a streamer closed captioner, uh, which is going to uh, attempt to automatically uh, add closed captioning. Now, I don't know if it's working. Uh, I should actually go and actually just go over here to my own Twitch page here and see if that's working. Um, actually, my own. Mute it. Yeah, Stream CC, Closed Captioner, and uh, uh, I, think I, I think I enabled it. It might not be working yet. It might actually take a little bit to go here, uh, but... Uh, I did add, I added the extension, and I think I did it right, um, but uh, I might not have done it right, so the thing was that I, I put it in, yeah, put configure, uh, configure extension, yeah, I don't know, so it might not have worked, uh, if it hasn't worked, I will uh, endeavor to, uh, to get that going for the next stream, because uh, it's not a hard thing to set up. Uh, uh, you saw the control panel for it. Yeah, Lashbrook. So it's not, it doesn't appear to be automatically um, uh, uh, doing it. And I might not have actually turned it on because I think I have to go to the website to do that. Uh, I didn't test this. I should have tested it. Uh, I should have just done a test stream uh, and looked for it. Uh, so I apologize uh, for that. Uh I think it's set on there. Uh, is now active as like there. Yeah, uh, that looks good. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't know if it's act. It doesn't seem to be actually working. So I apologize for that. That I have not uh, gotten that part done yet. Uh, you gotta go here. You gotta go there. Can uh, there. You gotta go there. Uh, Yeah. Uh, so far, not showing up. Sorry, everybody. Uh, I will take care of this offline. So I apologize uh, that that has not started to work yet. Um, but I will. Uh, I will make sure that for Wednesday stream, you know, my bonus building stream, uh, bonus uh, uh, the Pet Bears Enemy Club stream. I will. Uh, I will endeavor to have that work it. Um, so yeah, so sorry about that. I apologize uh, that that has not activated. Uh, okay, so we did one of our things here. Now let's do the other one. Um, so that's that one, and then the other one is here, our other little flyer thing. Uh, all right, so we're gonna take this here. Um, we're gonna flip these down like that. Gonna take this, gonna do that thing. Uh, these are everything's going to pop off because as I said I don't think this is a great kit and things like to pop off on it all the time which is frustrating goes like that that goes like that these go forward so I can just do that these turn forward and then yeah I don't think this looks like anything I think this just looks like, uh, oh. So here. Uh, I don't think this particularly looks like anything. I think it just looks weird. So I don't think this is as cool as the first part of it. Uh, but yeah, your mileage may vary. You might think that this is a very cool thing that this does. But I think that it looks weird because it just looks it just looks like legs it just looks like flying legs it doesn't look like because there's the leg problem is obviously is obviously a thing in in Gundam transformations like oh it's a jet that has legs on it uh, the Epion attempts to solve that problem by making the legs dragon heads but not really so like yeah I don't think this looks cool I think this looks lame but all right, that's the thing. So I'm gonna take photos of these of these two flyers now. 
uh, a lot of Gundam transformations are bad. Yeah, they well because they're they have to look. Hey, Mr. Bob, welcome. They have to look like cool mobile suits, and then if they maybe look like something else, great. Uh, I honestly the best one is um, the best one is uh, the Devil Gundam. Uh, because it just goes from being a big head to a big head with legs. Because it's not trying to be to it's not trying to be what it's not. It's like, oh, this is a head with legs. Alright, so we'll show this here. Alright, so that's the split form of it. We got our things done. We have now completed our Lancer. We're going to move on to the DJ. DJ! So put that aside over here in the back. Happy to work on our next kit, the DJ. The DJ. Um, this kit came out in 2019, and I bought it shortly after it came out. Or sorry, 2018, and I bought it in 2019. And uh, I'll let you a little behind, peek behind the curtain. Um, my $10 patrons have always wanted me to build something that was not this. Harold, thank you for hosting. I don't th particularly think that they're like, I hate this kit. It's just that uh, Aqua Butterfly, right? It's just that every time it's come up, it always there was always something else. A Master Grade, another thing, a cool Lego set. It's It, it has been in polls for most of 2019 and all of 2020. Anytime I had a poll up, it just never won. I thought it maybe would have won when it was between that and the Lancer, and then the Lancer won. And I was like, okay. And it's a small pool of people voting on this. Don't get me wrong. But it was just like, pe the people have spoken, and they don't think that this should be a thing that you do. And it's like, okay. Uh, sure. Uh, okay, so let me see if I can... Okay, I got the extension. Connect to Twitch here. Okay. Twitch. All right, it seems. Click on. Status off. Turn on. Remember, turn off or mute your mic when you don't want to have conversation closed captioned. Okay, did I do it? Did I get it going? Have I figured this thing out? Do I now have closed captions? I do. I have closed captions right now. Neat. Okay. I don't know why that didn't turn on before, but it didn't, and now it does. Okay. I now have closed captioning. Um, cool. And you can hide it if that's not something you want to see. You can disable it. I'm going to have it going so that I know that it's working because uh, it doesn't affect me. But use at your own discretion um and uh you know if it stops working let me know but that's uh that is uh, a cool feature that i'm happy exists and it doesn't cost me nothing to do so i might as well do it um and yeah i think that that's that's a cool thing uh uh it's that weird Zeta generation of suits that are kind of like one you liked from the original show, but it's definitely not it. You, you're not wrong. Um, you're not wrong at all. Well, now I don't see the closed captioning working. So I don't know. I think it went away. I don't know what happened. Uh, it does kind of block your display and picture of the kit. Yeah, so I would, I would want to put it... Uh, it's working. So I'd want to put it, uh, I think I would want to put it, uh, above. Let me see if I can change this. I did. Okay. I did that. I did that. I did that. And then, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, sorry. Uh, spoke United States. Displaced as a box. Moves it to the left side of the video. Uh, maybe that'll work? I don't know. So, sorry that I'm 
that I'm like this right now, y'all. I should have done a test stream with this, and I apologize. Yeah, so the, the DJ, it's just a weird-looking kit. Uh, I do like the, uh, the butterfly thing. I think that looks cool. Oh, I can... What if I move this up here? Ooh, what if I did that? I could do that. How's that? Is that better? For if I move it up to the top, I didn't even know I could do that. Okay, I'm going to do that. All right. Uh, yeah, that that's just where my books booklet's going to be. So that shouldn't be a bother. Uh, okay, cool. Ooh, some good color pages here. Yeah, it's got uh, like butterfly wings. Uh, this is a 2018 kit, so we do have explanations of things here. The bazooka, the the uh, the beam rifle, um, the uh, uh, naginata, which is just the beam sabers uh, connected. So it's a dual beam weapon, which is just fun. It's just fun. Uh, we got some stickers. Uh, yeah, this is a, I mean, you know, this is going to be a pretty server kit, except for the fact that it looks weird. I mean, it, it's an odd looking thing. Its backpack has wings. Mm, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Oh, these, these modern kits, you, you, you know, I just, and when I say modern, I mean like 2015 modern, like this era of model kits, like it is so nice to not have to stare at a thing and go, I don't know what these symbols are trying to tell me to do. Just be like, okay, oh, this is cool. Like, is that very culturally, you know, like, is that very like, I don't know, cultural is the right term, but is that very like, ah, oh, Pat, what are, you, what are you talking about? Come on. Probably, it's probably like, you know, English focused. But also, from a, perspective of a someone you know building these kits like hey if it's accessible to me easier and I can like read what it wants me to do and understand what it wants me to do better and faster awesome I'm always going to be excited about that uh so yeah I mean like if it means that like this is not going to be an issue for me to build this kit or less of an issue or like building a kit from like the 90s when I had to go and look up like a guide online uh, because I just couldn't understand what screw they wanted to be put in. I think instructions being more clear over time is pretty natural stuff in general. I would agree with you. Um, but I also think that like it's just an acknowledgement that not just the United States, certainly uh, other countries, but plenty of English speaking countries are also interested in these model kits. Um, and... Uh, you know, like that that that, uh, that understanding that there are other people that would be interested in, in what's going on here. I think rules uh, that there is that you know it's like acknowledging the interest of other people uh, is pretty cool. Uh, and you know, it's just like, hey, I'm just so excited about that when I'm like trying to put something together, knowing that uh, it's not going to be uh, me scratching my head. Um, have you had to look up translated instructions yet? So, Mr. Bob, when I built the Char Zaku Perfect Grade, which was, you know, one of the first Perfect Grades, a very old kit, uh, I looked up in translated instructions uh, about the screws because there were a lot of screws and they were different sizes and I couldn't tell the symbols close enough apart to understand what screws they needed. So I went and found a translated uh, instructions for that uh, and had those as reference, as reference photos. Um, that is probably the only time that I've had to actively look up a translation. Most of the time, uh, photos are going to do its justice. Uh, I did watch a very, and I'll do this now and again. Often I will watch a, uh, a YouTube video review. There's a few reviewers out there that I think do uh, a fine enough job. Um, but I often will uh, look for stuff up if I'm new to this kind of build. If it's a company I haven't bought kits from, or in the case of the initial D, when I had to build the uh, AE86, I watched a video of someone building uh, because I hadn't worked with liquid cement ever. And I hadn't done a glue kit in a very long time, but certainly not with liquid cement. I had very little knowledge of how to do that. So I went and watched some reference. Um, in the same way that I hope that I'm, a, a, you know, a, 
uh, obviously an enthusiast uh, for this stuff, but also that people can like watch and maybe learn the wrong way, but also like, you know, be reminded of, uh, of things and, and learn from my mistakes, but also my successes. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. Then I had like, a, um, I occasionally will, will look up some stuff if I'm like, uh, I want to try dry transfers. Let me watch some people do it and kind of get a sense of what that means and what's that what that looks like. Uh, still not good at that, but uh, at the app at doing it, good at watching reference videos. Not great at at, at actually doing dry transfers. Someday, someday I'll be okay at dry transfers. Not today though. Today I am just doing my thing. Um. All right, I thought about a thing I wanted to talk about tonight. Uh, I have talked in the past about some of the jobs I had. Certainly, I have talked about the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater and my many years there. Uh, oop, uh, we got a raid here. Uh, 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 thank you so much uh, uh, for the raid, Milk. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, welcome, welcome. Uh, hello, welcome to the Build With Bear Workshop. I'm Pat Bear. I build model kits and Lego sets. We just finished up, like literally minutes ago, finished up the Gundam uh, Lancer, the Impulse Gundam Lancer, and we're starting uh, the DJ uh, High Grade from Zeta. Uh, it's a weird looking kit, as you can see below. Uh, and I was just about to start talking about uh, a little bit about stuff of like uh, early job stuff, because I was reminiscing about a job that I feel like I don't know if this company is is still exists because I, I had it. Uh, uh, there are not many people building Gunpla tonight. That is a nice kit. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I build Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, actually, I have a new thing here. Uh, I just put in this uh, command. Uh, and it, uh, here's my schedule here. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Um, so... This was in the late '90s when when I was a, a youngster. Uh, my first my first actual job, I should say, my first actual job uh, was working for my dad as a house painter. I started when I was like 15, 16, something like that. He owned his own painting company. I worked for him. That was mostly summers. Uh, that was a little bit of when things were busy. Maybe on a weekend, I would do that. Nothing major. Not a big deal. Um, I but my first like real real job. Like, this is an after-school job a couple days a week. This is the weekends. And in the summer, it's whenever they need you. Uh, I worked for a place that uh, had a large property with a big kitchen and a big uh, reception hall. And then also outdoor stuff. Like, uh, there was a pool. There were uh, activities for kids. There was a basketball hoop. There was some table tennis. There was, like, food, outdoor food stuff and a bar. And... It was in its heyday in the 70s and 60s when it was a thriving business. Uh, it was a place for people to do like their company events, you know, their their big company picnics and people would get drunk and whatever. And it was a whole thing. And that was like how people celebrated the summer and thanks for being a great employee or family reunions or weddings, especially in the, the off season, not the non-summer season, people would do you know, the, the reception would be, maybe it would be a banquet for something or, or get together, but often weddings. And so I was uh, kitchen staff. I worked in the kitchen helping pr prep stuff. Uh, we ran, we did runners, we did, uh, um, we took care of uh, cleaning the outdoor area that was covered. We would help with maintenance and kind of just a jack of all trades assistant. Uh, there were waitresses that did a lot of the food selling but or prepping not selling and we would bring and support them we'd bring them stuff that they needed and make sure they had everything they needed and uh and it was i mean as, a, as far as high school goes it paid pretty good at the time uh i was working with a couple friends they were a family owned business so it was it had a, a nice vibe to it the, the the owners were brothers uh one of their sons was the head chef the other son was the head bartender and and was in charge of all the wait staff and it was like, yeah, it was like a nice little family run business. Uh, a good a good first job, like first real job. You know, I drove there. Um, I learned a lot. 
I learned how to repair uh, and maintain and uh, reload a soda machine. Learned about that from just helping out the guy because I expressed an interest in it. Uh, I didn't learn a lot about cooking and prepping because we were doing like appetizer stuff. Uh, and, you know, and, and oh, let's bring these burgers out. Uh, I learned that uh, I don't like liver and onions because uh, sometimes we would do corporate or, you know, like the the old timers would come, like the very old guys from like a union would come and then we would do liver uh, and onion sandwiches because they bacon, liver and onion. Uh, no, thanks. Uh, didn't love that. But I learned a bit. I learned about how to actually in an empty in an empty lot field uh, direct cars to park because we didn't you know, we figured that stuff. I figured out a lot of that. Um, uh and I can, my natural like sense of uh, figuring out what's best for me uh, and what I excel at, um, that's actually where I developed a lot of it, I think, because um, I didn't realize this until much later. Uh, I have uh, pollen allergies and grass allergies, so I would attempt to not do lawn maintenance, the weed whacker or run the mower or anything like that. Uh, thank you for the follow, Sigma. Uh I appreciate that. Uh, so I would attempt to not do those things because those things made me feel like drain my energy. I didn't realize at the time it was an allergy. I was just like, I don't want to do this. So I would figure out ways to not do that and maybe delegate in a way that wasn't necessarily what I was supposed to be doing, but often was just like, oh, I found other things to do when that time comes. Uh, like driving the golf cart that had a... Uh, uh, that was converted so that we could bring like food and stuff from place to place from the different buildings. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it was a summer job. It uh, during the year, like once a week, they would they would pay a couple of us to come in and do some other stuff. So I would get paid a little bit. Uh, things I came in as things were definitely drying up as far as companies would rather have like not have people drink while they're with other employees, or they would rather just do something on their own instead of doing that. And like you get less family reunions. You still had weddings, but, and, and wedding receptions, but the, the, there'd be, there'd be days where there would be like three events happening at the same time just to save, you know, like whatever, like, oh, hey, well, you can save this money if you, if everyone comes together, you know, if you don't mind, there's being other people or you can rent the whole place. And people were like, nah, I have other people there. Um, I will say, uh, a little bit of pat, but like, look, I'll, I'll admit this fully. It took a long time for the sense of justice that this man has uh, to develop itself. It took me a little while to kind of get that part of Pat out. Um, but I, I vividly remember like talking to, there were two uh, uh, waitresses that worked there. And the waitresses, they were just like prepping, you know, cooking the hamburger stuff and handing people out, right? So they're, they're waitresses. They're called waitresses. That that's their pay. But there's no tip jars. So not getting tipped because all the food is, is, you know, eat what you want. No one's no one's buying anything, so no one's tipping. But these 16-year-old girls, because, oh, here was a thing. Everyone in the kitchen, everyone who does grounds work, those are guys. All of the waitresses are ladies. Or girls, teen teenage girls. It's a lot of people's first jobs, and then the uh, the lifeguards were w whatever they hired, uh, uh, whoever. But yeah, it was gendered, and I was like, that sucks. That's weird. I don't love that. Uh, and then I realized the waitresses were getting paid what you can pay waiters and waitresses, which if you ever worked a food service job as a waiter or waitress, um, you don't have to pay them that much because they're supposed to be getting tips. But they didn't get tips. No one ever tipped them. They didn't even have a tip jar. So they were just getting paid nothing. I think they were doing a little better than state minimums, but like they were getting absolutely nothing. Uh, and for all of them, it was just like a part-time gig they did and then it, they only worked in the summer and it was like 
the the conversation uh yeah oof is right so i never had this conversation i'll admit i never had this conversation but uh one of my fellow employees had the conversation you know you complain about how you have to hire all these new people every summer uh if you gave them raises and to have them come back the next year a bunch of them would they're just finding other jobs in the off season uh but it was generally believed that it was easier to just get new people than to to you know to pay them more to stay uh so yeah so i had a couple friends who i knew from from my high school that worked there that yeah that that i when i would mention uh that i was working they would just be like that that place hired me when i my first job but it didn't pay me and I didn't know I should be asking for more at the time. Because, um, uh, yeah. It, it's just... Eh. it was, Look, it was a fine enough gig. I learned a lot. I mostly learned how to drive stick because I had never learned how to drive stick. And there was a truck that was only that. And I kind of learned how to do it. Um, I think I have forgotten everything I learned about driving stick. So I would not want to test that out without a bunch of practice. But uh, I had, uh, you know, some good times figuring out um, stuff while I worked there. Uh, and I will say this. Uh, I was done working there because uh, I was going to go off to college. But they hired me at the end of the season before I went out to school to paint. And my rate was good. They paid. They paid. They were going to pay me my hourly rate. And I was like, that's not for house painting because I was basically painting a big barn. I, they had projects for me to do. It wasn't a lot of painting, but I had to paint a bunch of places. So I went, I was like, no, you have to pay me more. And I did a very poor job. Uh, and I do not, uh, at the time, I kind of regretted it. And then in hindsight, I certainly don't regret it. Um, but yeah, I did. I did a, I'm not going to come back here. I'm going to college, at, you know, upstate. I'll never see these people again. Uh, and that is mostly true. Uh, but yeah, I have to imagine that that business must have shut down at some point and finished up. And then if they did manage to continue, then I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how they could have because yeah, it was just, it was kind of a dying business. Uh, I got to work with the school system computer lab for three to four years in high school. Ooh, yeah, that's good. Uh, I did it. Um, limited IT. Uh, I think I've talked about that on stream before. Uh, the best thing about that job is uh, <laughs> kids love stuffing things into Pentium. Yes, yes, they do. They very much do. Ooh, I kind of like that shoulder pieces there. Um, one of the things I, uh, I loved about my next job uh, was uh, doing IT stuff was uh, I worked for a company that had they hired too many people. And they didn't realize they hired too many people because the number one problem with networked computers was not the computers. It was the printer uh, photocopiers, which we weren't allowed to touch or service because they had a deal with the company that they got them from that, that they would have to call a person to come and fix them. So if there was an issue, we would come, we get this thing. Hey, come here. Okay, and we're like, hey, what's up? What do you need? Blah, blah, blah. Is your, does your mouse not working? Uh, do you need whatever? Uh, do you have to plug something in? Did your monitor not working because it got kicked? Uh, whatever. Uh, and they're like, no, uh, the printer's jammed? And I was like, oh. No, that's not. That's not us. You got to get somebody else to do that. Uh, get your kid a job with HVAC one summer and the sun the next if you want them to aim high. Uh, I love that. Uh, what brought about the reminiscing? So just like talking about job stuff and talking about formative things, I was having a conversation with a friend about um, uh, formative work experiences because, uh, you know, they had, the friend had asked me about like, Oh, well, did you like work for your dad? And I was like, yeah, but that wasn't really like a lot of my my early experiences uh, weren't really with my dad. 
as a house painter, I didn't do a lot of painting, um, mostly because I uh, have a fear of heights, which I have conquered a little bit, but certainly not enough. So I couldn't really do it. Uh, was this a job you had to drive 45 minutes to that you couldn't service the issue? Oh, uh, no. Uh, no, Mr. Bob, because we were in-house. We were in-house IT for this company. So it was very easy to just uh, um, hang out, uh, play a lot of networked uh, uh, Team Fortress, playing a lot of networked Team Fortress in Doom, um, and just kind of like hanging out, trying to like say like, hey, what do you need? Okay, oh, well, we can't do that. We got to, you know, whatever. Or, yeah, or like, reconnecting someone to the network because they thought they could plug their phone into their computer and you can but not the way you're doing it and routing things and okay and uh my boss would be the person to handle people who were trying to telecommute uh uh because there was tell there was some teleconferencing stuff uh i did learn a bit about how to get uh some uh like projectors to work with like serial ports and uh and stuff like that i did i did learn a little bit of that a little bit with vga at the time but uh yeah so i did learn a little bit of stuff that would let her help me um i used to be good at maintaining hand tools i could get your blade sharper than anyone else summer school it was great because there was essentially uh, no end users. Yeah, I mean that was the thing, right? So it was like this was uh, this was a uh, a company, and they had a pool uh, because there the property had a pool, which I I used the gym. I never used the pool, uh, but I always thought that was a, a weird addition. Um, but yeah, they eventually realized they had too many IT people. The real job, which I've talked on this stream about before. As many of you have heard, I'm sure if you've been here for a little bit, is uh, okay. So I got to beat one here. Um, is my job at a import store? So it was a store originally in the mall, uh, and it was uh, this is in Connecticut. So they would go to New York and they would get fan subbed that you know that had been copied to VHS tapes. They sold. Fan subs. Did they sell a few legit products? Yes. They also sold bootleg uh, CDs, uh, like you know, that had like literal print that were like cellophane wrapped and were like printed labels uh, of like uh, sa uh, anime soundtracks. The wall scrolls, I think, were real. The model kits were real. The model kits were definitely real. That's where I started doing model kit stuff. Was I would this was a store that I would go to, and I started buying model kits from them. And then uh, one of my, I uh, made, a couple, you know, like not friends, but I was friendly with the staff because I was somebody who was buying things and was knowledgeable and nice. And I, uh, I distinctly remember like uh, the employee there at the time was like assistant manager. And she was like, hey, have you watched this show? And mentioned it. And I was like, yeah. And I like talked about it a little bit. And she was like, cool. And I was like, hey. Next time you're hiring, let me fill out an application. And she goes, yeah, all right, fill it out now. And I, so I filled out an application and I ended up working there. And I was able to not work for my dad. And that was great because I was tired of house painting. Uh, this was, uh, you know what's happening? Uh, found your channel. Okay. Yes. Hello. Welcome. 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 Let's see how that goes. Uh, welcome to the Build Will Bear Workshop. Bill Malka. Ah, yes. I had a feeling that you were going to say that. And now you go away. Because we, we, don't, we don't want that. Uh, so goodbye. Goodbye. Um, it's generally... Y'all, um, I mean, you know, you know what bots look like, but if they just say what, like word for word, what the, uh, what the title of your stream is, they're probably not real people. We know, uh, painting in the summer time is a bad time. Yeah, it wasn't, 
I, I didn't love paint. I never loved painting. I didn't mind the indoor work a bit. So I was in between. Uh, I had, uh, uh, had done a year of college and was prepping for a move to New York to go to acting school because that's what I really wanted to do was act. I didn't want to go to four years of college. Also, the acting program at the school. Part of the thing was I went to a school with beautiful theaters so that I could learn theater stuff there, like a regular college. And I was like, okay, fine. Um, they were shutting down the theater program. <laughs> they had a beautiful facility. I took, um, I, uh, ended up with, uh, taking, uh, some theater tech classes that were very helpful for me, but they were shutting down the theater program. Uh, and so I was like, well, I worked for a year and then, and took like so a couple acting classes locally and then moved to New York to do acting, uh, uh, school, uh, which is what I wanted to do uh, the whole time. So I did that, but it meant that like I had a year where I had to work, and so I was working for my dad and trying to find something else, and I ended up getting the gig at uh, this animation, this place that sold stuff in the mall. Um, and it was like a full store. We sold uh, Hello Kitty stuff. Um, we were had to be open for mall hours, but most of the time that we were open, no one was ever coming in because... You know, at 10 a.m. on a weekday, and, you know, you're mostly getting... Um, okay, so I have to figure out how this goes. Sorry, y'all. Hold on a second here. Um, that time of day, you're mostly just getting, um, uh, like, mall walkers, people that go to the mall to exercise uh, and walk up and down the aisle or walk down, you know, around. Uh, occasionally, you're getting people that are doing some shopping, retirees, Um all right, I'm actually gonna look at this here. Uh, all right, so these are, so these two pieces form the eyes. Okay, so that's what it is. These form the eyes. I'm just looking as a reference because I don't know this kit super well. I'm trying to figure out how these pieces go. So we do have to put stickers on this. I just wanted to I wanted to attach these pieces before I attach a sticker. I'm trying to figure this part out. Um, uh, so I apologize for this little moment here, but they're like, take these parts and just shove them in there. Um, so yeah, so I, uh, it was easy. I got in, opened up, nobody, nobody came in for a while. Uh, a few times people would come in and buy like something from Hello Kitty, like Hello Kitty stationery sold very well in the beginning hours of the day. Uh, but, uh, all right, so, how's this supposed to go? Um, but we didn't really sell a lot, uh, until school let out. And then kids would come, teens would come on their own, kids would come with their parents, and then we would sell a bunch of VHS tapes and VCDs, and then by the end of it, uh, DVDs, people started making like, you may remember, uh, if you're anywhere near my age, uh, getting DVDs that were definitely like CD quality, but had like 10 episodes of like Yu-Gi-Oh that was translated using Babblefish, uh, very clearly. Uh, my favorite about Yugi was that they would translate his name. So it would just say game. Uh, and then it would say like, Yami, and it would just say dark, and you're like, oh, you y'all didn't use any context clues in this one, huh? Okay. Uh, Alright, so I apologize. I'm trying to figure out how these pieces work. These are these are a little tiny. Sometimes with a high grade, you end up with some tiny pieces, and, and they assume that you know when they're pointing arrows at this, where you want it to go. So this is this piece here. We got F3. I figured it out, y'all. Uh, Hong Kong classics, indeed. Uh, I figured it out. It said, select which part to attach. It's not that I attach both. It's that I attach one of these. So these are apparently going to be slightly different. So I'm just going to put one in because I kind of don't care. Basically, I ha can have options of different eyes. 
That's all that was. This whole time, that's all that was. It was just pick an eye. So I apologize for that delay. Because uh, I was like, how do both these parts fit in there? They don't. And then we're going to put our sticker on. Tiny sticker, our first sticker. Very small. All right. Uh, oh, nice. Um, yeah. So, uh, welcome. Um, uh, I will say right off the bat, I am an enthusiast. I've been doing this for uh, almost three years on stream, but I did it for a long time before just for fun. Uh, I, but I am definitely enthusiast. I like model kit building. Um, it's relaxing and fun. And when I wanted to start streaming more, it made sense to do this rather than gaming because I'm bad at games and I'm okay at this. Uh, but I will say in uh, specifically about what we're doing here is uh, my chat is very nice. Um, some of these folks are here because uh, I am a friend of the website Giant Bomb and have done stuff with them. I've done panels at PAX, uh, mostly comedy stuff. I, I came up in, in New York in the comedy scene there and the alt comedy scene. Um, so uh, that's kind of how some people got to know me. And as I was like wanting to do more stuff for them that was outside of, you know, convention going um, and doing panels, uh, I started doing this. And it's been very fun. I really enjoy streaming. Um, but as I said, I am a uh, I'm a model kit enthusiast and a building enthusiast. I, I don't claim to be an expert, and oftentimes I uh, I'm just doing my best. But yeah, um, I would say uh, you know a high grade. If if you've got a favorite Gundam show, if you like Gundam. And you like a show with Gundam. You buy a kit for that show. That's the best advice I can give you. Because at the end of the day, even if you're like, I'm not really sure how this works. I'm not really sure what I need to do here. You're like, but I know what this looks like. Like, I don't really know the DJ too well. I, I watch Zeta, but I'm not, I wasn't big on Zeta. So I'm like kind of staring at this, right? But I can build a Death Scythe blindfolded. Because I watched a lot of Gundam Wing and love Gundam Wing. It's my favorite Gundam. Uh, so I would say if you've got a favorite show, you buy a kit from that show. High grades are smaller than buying a master grade, smaller pieces, but are generally a little easier. Uh, there's also a world of stuff outside of Gundam that is fun and totally cool to, to try out. Like if you don't mind a lot of stickers you can build ships from one piece. Uh, uh, I think I found you through a PAX panel. Actually, this is just my first time catching stream. Oh, nice. Yeah. Some people do come in here because they're searching for Gunpla, which is why I put it in the title. Other people know me from like, they're just like, oh, I don't know. You just like chat with people that I follow on Twitter and now I'm here. Uh, and then, yeah. And then some people uh, come in because they know me from, from my life. Uh, believe it or not, there are some people here in chat who don't build model kits. They just like me as a person. Uh, ever built a kit from... Uh, no, I have never done that. The uh, Reganista and G. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think I've built any kits for that. I might have built for one. Uh, maybe I've done one kit. I don't... I don't remember if I've built anything from that. Uh, yeah, that's a that is a show that I have. Uh, I don't think I have. Uh, I know of, but I'm not super familiar with. I might have built one kit from that series. I'm gonna look to see. Uh, I think I have maybe one. Uh, I don't think it was the G self, but it was like one of those. I don't know. I'm going to look and see if they list the... I'm just on the Gundam. Gundam. The Gundam wiki on fandom is very good when you are like, wait, what is... This? Especially when you're trying to build stuff from like build fighters and they're all references to other kits. Hey, what's up? Um, that's very tough when you're like, what is this supposed to be from? And you're like, oh, it's based on the Mach 3. And you're like, oh, okay. 
That makes more sense. Okay. But it's all but it's supposed to be based on the Mach 3, but it's actually based on the other thing that was up from this series. And you're like, oh, okay, now I'm starting to get what's going on with this show, with this thing. All right, so we'll put that there. Goes there. And then let's build the rest of the head here. Um, uh, because you're building Gunpla. Your name is familiar to me, but I couldn't say from where specifically. Yeah, um, I, uh, I'm a former improviser from New York because staying in New York was not going to be something I could do in the year 2020. Um, but you may know me from PAX stuff, Penny Arcade Expo, uh, from co-running League of Heels, the uh, video game wrestling show, to some of the other panels I've done, uh, to hanging out with... Uh, uh, I've been a guest on some stuff with Giant Bomb, uh, and just, you know... Some internet shenanigans here and there. Uh, I was recently on Loading Ready Run, the Loading Ready Run uh, network. I did a couple bits there. A, uh, a night of Jackbox games with them, which was rad. And then also was on Kathleen's Island Tour, although that was just audio. But yeah, I'm on the internet. I've got, I've got some good friends on there, and we do some silly things. And then I get to do some fun stuff like this. Uh, I like the look of the turquoise instead of white on main unit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, hey, I'm never against a, this is definitely the main Gundam in a show, right? Uh, I like that. I, I like a, I like those traditional, this is the main Gundam. Check out this Gundam. This is the main characters one. Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate the Herald. But yes, no, uh, I have been very spoiled by having an incredible community where on occasion people come in to be jerks, but it is very rare. Um, the biggest issue is that sometimes people come in and because I really read chat, they are overly interested in chatting with me about a lot of things because they're very excited about uh, the fact that I read chat and you know can respond uh and maybe they uh are a little enthusiastic uh i'm not saying hey chat this is great i love it when people are chatting when we're talking about stuff um you know uh that always makes me happy but sometimes people are like hey i'm gonna just take up all of the air <laughs> i was like okay um but usually they're here for a couple streams and then they bounce because they go find something else to watch. And that's okay too. Also, sometimes people that we really like get busy. They're like working at night now. And they can't be in streams. Like, shout out to Asmo. One of our early regulars. One of my faves. Uh, haven't seen Asmo in a stream that often. It's a bummer. But Asmo is very busy right now. So it's like, okay. We'll go do you. You do you, Asmo. Uh, man, the... If you just saw this kit like this, you'd be like, what's going on with this model kit? Why does it have a green head and nothing else is green? Obviously, there's a lot more green to it. But right now, it just looks like it looks like I'm doing I'm that I'm doing a kit bash. This thing just looks kit bashy. Um, OK, so one thing we're going to do right now is we're going to take a pause for the cause. If you're new to the stream and of course, welcome new friends. Um, I don't take an ad break during the stream. I do ads right before the stream starts, but at this point, I'm just going to talk to you. Uh, and I talk. I call it a pause for the cause. This is just ways that I let you know uh, how you can support the channel if you're interested. And again, you don't have to. You don't even have to chat. We got like Aristofan, our, fan, our friend Aristofan, generally pipes in with emotes now and again, but isn't really a chatter. And that's cool. And I got no problem with that. Um, so you can chat if you'd like to. Uh, um... But uh, first and foremost, if you're currently a subscriber, throw the bear cave the leg of the scythe and moat. Let the people know. Uh, subscribing is a great way to support the channel. Um, you can use your Twitch Prime coin. If you have Amazon linked with Twitch, you get that uh, one free token you can give to somebody. It doesn't have to be me, but it could be me. Um, but yeah, it really appreciate it. Also, uh, gifting subs is huge. Uh Gifting uh, or using bits and coins also helps me get that bottom line because uh, uh, 
anything I make through all the ways I'm going to say about supporting just goes back into the channel. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, hitting that follow and turning your notifications on so you know when I go live is another great way to support the channel. Uh, it's nice when people are watching. I'll do this for three people. It's nicer when I'm doing it for 20 people. Uh, here's my schedule. I'll put it in there. Uh, uh, and thank you for the follow as well. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, that way you know, uh, here's my schedule. I do model kit building Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern. Um, oh, Chihuahua Pugs, uh, welcome to it. Uh, thank you so much for gifting that sub, uh, uh, Beats. I really appreciate it. Uh, and Chihuahua, welcome, welcome to the Bear Cave. You're a subscriber. Enjoy it. Uh, you get some fun emotes uh, and double the channel points, and you can ask me to do things because uh, I have channel points. Um, but it all goes to me to buy model kits and building model kits. That's where your money goes. Uh, I'm going to get through these as quick as I can. I apologize that I even take a break like this, but, you know, got to pay gotta pay for more model kits. Uh, when I'm done with a kit, I got to buy more. Anyway, I got a Patreon. That's another option. You can join my Patreon because maybe $5 isn't going to work for you. But $1... $3, or if you're like, $5 isn't enough, but tier two doesn't really feel like anything, well, there's a $10 patron, Patreon level, so you could join that. I got a Patreon. You could join it if you wanted to. You don't have to. Some people do both, and they don't have to do that, but I'm grateful that they do. Um, also, if you just want to directly be like, I can't do this month to month, but here's, I got a couple bucks. It's always good when you have a few extra viewers. Uh, I had some great streams this past weekend. Yeah, it's nice to have that because sometimes... You know, I am talking to a webcam, but I know that you're there, and that's that's nice. I I, I appreciate it. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I have a um a coffee and a Streamlabs link and a PayPal, and all the money that that comes in goes to buying more model kits. I just bought uh, another kit to build that's coming later this week, and a Lego set. Uh, and I got a Lego set that is one of those three in ones. Uh. Join, page, yeah, join Patreon and support the Anime Club. Indeed. My bonus stream this Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. I do a bonus stream every Wednesday. Uh, we are going to be watching... Uh, we're going to talk about anime. I'm going to talk about anime. I always talk about anime. But this one's specifically uh, me talking about the shows I'm watching this season and if I've dropped any, which right now I haven't. I might drop uh one that i'm going to talk about today but it's only five minutes it's four minutes long so i'm probably not going to drop it if it was 22 minutes i would have dropped it because i don't i don't think it would work for 22 minutes but anyway um uh i got that i got that i got that oh yeah i'll get through these quickly we'll get back to building i have a wish list um if you wanted to jump the queue be like hey forget that model kit forget that lego set i want you to build this next well, you buy something from my Amazon wish list, and then I build it. Uh, I got some cheap Lego stuff in here. Uh, the Ark, we built the Impulse um, uh, Gundam Lancer. The Ark is the other half of that kit, and you can mix and match them, and that's silly. But So there's that. Uh, there's, yeah, like I said, some Lego, uh, some high grades, some real grades, some master grades. Master grades are very expensive right now. I would not say, like, hey, buy me a master grade for me to build on stream. Because, um, uh, like... Right, yeah, right now the camphor is like the cheapest master grade I can find on Amazon. Um, everything is very expensive right now, and it makes sense. Ooh, why is that RE100 $100? Y'all, that should not be $100. I am going to take this off my wish list because I do not want someone to buy a $100 Jagdaga for me to buy, for, for me to build, even though it is weird and wild. It is not $100 weird and wild. Yikes. Uh, presses are a little bad. Another option, you could buy a gift card from USA Gundam Store if you wanted to. You buy that gift card, you get a code in your email, you send that to me uh, via Whisper here on Twitch or DM me on Twitter because my DMs are open. You can be like, hey, I bought you this gift card. Why don't you buy this with it or use it towards this? I'll take that under consideration. I have a couple things coming from... Uh, from USA Gundam Store that I pre-ordered coming soon. Uh, and I'm excited to build that. Uh, all right. I got a Discord. Uh, do you have a P.O. Box that you send a Gunpla to? Um, not right now. I appreciate that. 
Uh, I do not have a P.O. Box. Uh, I just moved at the beginning of this month. Uh, I relocated uh, and uh, do not have a P.O. Box set up, but I appreciate that. Um, uh, I will like. I would like to do that in the future. Uh, so, but I appreciate that offer. Um, yeah, that's something that I'm looking at. I'm trying to get a little more stabilized here with some work before I uh, spend money on a PO box. Uh, and so, I, but I appreciate that. Uh, all right, we gotta do my Discord. I have a Discord. You can join my Discord if you want. It's fun. It's chill. People will post photos of stuff they're working on. Uh, and I post photos after every stream of what I've built that night. So if you miss the stream, you can at least see my progress and then watch the VOD or watch it on YouTube. Uh, and then I got a couple links for you to watch. Pat Bear's Anime Club. As I said, on Wednesday, I'm recording live on Twitch my next episode. It's a thing I do twice a month or every other Monday, I should say. Uh, this past one. Uh, was about websites that I used to make my life easier to, to find out about upcoming anime and to build wish lists or watch lists and uh, and then find out schedules and keep track of schedules. So it's like tools of the trade. Because uh, people ask me about that. They're like, how do you even find these shows? Well, uh, I talked about it in this episode. Uh, and then um, Bearing the List is a ongoing series I do every Wednesday this past Wednesday's video uh, I use tier maker to rank things it's for it's for laughs but I ranked a bunch of sandwiches it's a long video because there were a lot of sandwiches to rank this coming one I'm gonna put up on Wednesday is also anime related because I'm doing the anime stream so I made this Wednesday's one also be anime related uh, it's real good y'all uh, it was recommended to me. I'll tell you. I'm, you know what I'm going to tell you? Look out for it. If you're a $5 or $10 patron, you're going to get it tomorrow. Everyone else is going to get it on Wednesday when I put it online and, and link it. Uh, I look at 10 anime betrayals and rank them of how good they are. So I did a top 10 anime betrayals tier ranking. Uh, it's not the ranking of the 10 that uh, Watch Mojo did the first time, which became the meme, because I actually don't think some of those are good betrayals. So I found 10 of them, because it had to be 10, right? And I ranked the top 10 anime betrayals. Uh, it was a suggestion that I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. Uh, spoilers abound in that one, because it's talking about betrayals. And... A couple of them you shouldn't see coming. So maybe, maybe if you if you see me start talking about a show, you just click out of it. Um, all right, so that's all that. We're gonna we're gonna uh, I'm gonna drink a little water here because I'm I'm getting a little a little dry. Oop. Right. Um. But uh, pa uh, bearing the list is a fun little series. I I rank a lot of stuff from like. Uh, I don't I haven't done a lot of video games. I should do more video game stuff. Maybe I'll like rank like Persona games or something, uh, something like that. Um, but I've ranked a bunch of uh, things, uh, and uh, it's it's silly. Like I did sandwiches. I've done snacks. I've done beverages. I've done members of the New Day. Like just ranked members of the New Day. Like I don't know. Like uh, do some wrestling stuff. But anyway, we're gonna get back to building. And I'm going to talk about the three anime uh, episodes that I watched since Saturday stream. Now, there's not a lot of anime that comes out on Sundays and Mondays right now. In fact, one of these shows actually comes out on Saturday during the stream. One Piece comes out while I'm streaming on Saturday. So I watch it generally. I watch it on Monday uh, or, or Saturday or Sunday, I should say. Sunday. Oh, all over the place. Um, but sometimes I will... Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, sometimes I'll watch some new stuff, but this one, I'm just watching, uh, what's out. I'm excited about, uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about tonight, which is, uh, episode of One Piece was real good, y'all. Uh, it's still the kind of like, hey, there's a bunch of little stories happening. Um, there's tension, uh, among the rebels, and this alliance may be falling apart. Uh, and that's not great. Um, but it's really... This episode's about Zoro. It's about Zoro fighting a dude with size. Now, you may... If you're not following this, Zoro... Uh, 
A guy stole his sword, which he thinks that Zoro stole, which he kind of, he inherited a stolen sword, basically. Uh, so he's only working with two swords right now. Uh, and one thing that was pretty fucking cool as shit and some good action was a guy with a scythe, with, with two hand scythes, stabbed him, and then Zoro tightened his muscles so the guy couldn't pull his sword back, his scythe, so that Zoro could use that as his third blade. And that was pretty cool. So he killed an assassin. Uh, of course, he was bleeding. Uh, and he's very lucky that another guy that he was fighting who stole that sword from him, which he felt like he was stealing it back, decided not to fight him uh, at that moment, which was good. Uh, unexpectedly good because that guy not didn't seem to have honor or ethics or anything, but apparently he does have some because he was like, walked away. So that was good. And then um, Luffy still hasn't figured out how to use the hockey that he wants to try to unlock. He's trying to use a powerful hockey that he uh, rem he randomly remembered that Rayleigh used. He did fight a guy uh, that was a uh, that had eaten one of those smile like fake devil fruits. He he fought a devil fruit user, a fake devil fruit user that was like, in a bear. He like had basically like a bear costume that was tough. And he said Kuma at the end of things. I don't know why so many people that have bear things say Kuma at the end. I understand that that is the Japanese word for bear. But, like, it's very Pokemon-y. And it's very strange. I don't know. Anyway, that dude got beat up real bad. Uh, real fast. Because uh, this whole thing is very silly. Uh, letting Luffy fight at full power seems to be quite a very... Um, uh, it's just hubris, right? It's like, hey, you're, you don't understand. You're fighting, you know. It's it, it's like over time you're gonna lose because you're fighting like tougher and tougher people. You don't understand, and it's like, no, you don't understand. He's he's not gonna get tired. He's gonna keep fighting everybody. Like you, you he got stronger, and then you took away the thing that weakened him. It's gonna. He's gonna be okay. Anyway, that's one piece. It's it's all right right now. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, finding out some more stuff about what's going on there uh, with the story. And yeah, overall, pretty good. Uh, Ninja Collection. This is a show that if this was not four minutes and change with the op closing theme. Um, that I would stop watching because can you put a more recent discord invite? Oh, is it not? Is, uh, is that not working? Yeah. Let me, uh, do that. Uh, put it there. Oh, Sigma was able to get in. Uh, but, uh, yeah, hold on. Give me one second here. Uh, fight people. Okay. Uh, put this here in chat. And there you go. That should work. Let me know if it doesn't. Um, but, yeah. Um, hmm, sorry. Uh, uh, Ninja Collection is short. It is a weird looking animation style. And it's supposed to be that there are monsters and demons in our world. And some folks inherited uh, shinobi powers, so ninja powers, in order to fight them. You, you, uh, oh, no problem. Thank you. Welcome to the community. It's very chill. Uh, uh, it's very very uh, laid back uh, Discord, um, but yeah, you're welcome. Um, so yeah, Ninja Collection. I don't think it's good. Uh, I would go as to say that it's weird and maybe not worth your time, but it's short, and so I'm still gonna watch it. But yeah, basically, there's some monster stuff, and so it's a uh, 
a bunch of like short little clips uh, or whatever. Every, every episode is like some other character suddenly finding themselves in some sort of weird situation, like feeling really anxious. And then a character, one of the four people that is going to solve the problem is around, I think coincidentally. And then they solve the demonic problem. I have not, they do not use ninjutsu to do it. Or if they do, we do not see it. It is kind of weird. Um, uh, in this one, there was like a girl partying. She was at like a pool party indoors, it was, which was okay, sure, have fun. And then like people were disappearing into the water. And then there was a guy that was like, wants to buy you a drink. And he, and it was like, oh, that's the ninja guy. Okay. Yeah. And then he took care of the problem. And I don't know. It's weird. Uh, every episode's been short and strange. Uh, and there's only been a couple of them. And like I said, I would not say go out of your way to watch this. Especially if you like the series that is a spinoff of, which is the Japanese uh, ghost stories, uh, which is way better. Everyone who doesn't like this has been telling me. Uh, but anyway... Uh, also the closing song doesn't, does not fit the vibe. And I really like that. The closing song is like very typical anime, like theme. And I'm like, that's pretty great. This is just like, I don't know. We have this, we have this song. We hope it charts for our weird, weirdo anime. I don't know why it got, I don't know why it got picked up. Like why is, why is Crunchyroll showing this thing? It feels very strange. Uh, but I don't know, you know, licensing is weird. It might be one of those things where like this got licensed to make it easier to license something else. One of those things. I don't know. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh yeah. God of high school. Now talk about a good opening song. I would say that that is the song, uh, of this season. That is the best opening song this season. It's, uh, it's like a dance electronica. It's a little... Uh, um, dubstepy, just a little bit, but like high energy. Uh, the animation, the, the that goes with it is very cool. It's a, you know, it's a fighting series. Uh, there was not a lot of fighting in this episode of God of High School. So God of High School starts with like, okay, it's a bunch of kids. Uh, that uh, yes, a slow bird. There's a little wob 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 in it. It's good. I linked it on my Twitter if you want to go back and check that out earlier because I was thinking about how, like, this is actually this is actually a very good song. You know, there's not a lot this season that I'm watching, so it's not hard for that because, um, like, I don't like the Fire Force Season 2 theme. I'm hoping the second half of the season has a better theme. Uh, I think Black Clover's theme is the same as it was before. Is The most recent one is, is fine. Uh, I've liked more other ones better. I think the, I can't even tell you what um, this, I remember the art style of the opening for um, Food Wars is, but I don't remember the content. Um, this reminds me, okay, so we will talk about Got a High School because shit actually happened. This, this episode looked like shit was not going to happen and then shit happened. So we will talk about that. But I want to briefly talk about um, the show on Saturday. I forgot a very, not important, but a thing I want to talk about, about uh, um, the misfit of Demon King Academy. This episode, uh, episode four, I believe, the voice actor of the main character sang the theme song. And he did an okay job with it, but he's doing it like in character. Uh, but it's just the regular theme. And I forgot to mention that because I really like it. Because it was just like, that's that's the voice actor of this show just doing the theme song. That's weird. Why is this happening? Uh, and it was it, it was good. He did a good job. But uh, I forgot to mention that before, so I did want to say that because I think that's neat. Uh, anyway, got a high school. So it's a tournament. We got some of our favorites like Mira, the sword user. She is trying to... Um, she's working real hard, uh, to, um, reopen, uh, sorry, uh, she's, she's working real hard 
to uh, to revive the sword school that her father started and passed away. Uh, we find out that she's been raised by her uncle, who has no talent for the sword, so he unfortunately could not continue. And uh, her cousin, who treats her like a little sister, or like or like her her as an older sister. They're cute. They're great. Um, a dude shows up and is like, I want to marry you. I'm a rich dude that is famous, and I want to marry you. If you leave the tournament and come with me, when you're done in high school, we'll get married, and you'll I'll give you the money to reopen your school. And she's like, yes. Uh, and the dudes aren't her friends. Our dudes are not happy with that because she's going to leave the tournament. She was going to be in the semifinals for uh, this this tournament and fight uh, a dude. And it's like, that's not cool. Yeah, what? because uh, done with high school. Because Aristophan, this is the god of high school. So these are high school kids that are competing in this. Um, so he's like, basically like, we'll get married when you're, when you're graduate, when you graduate it, when you're done with high school. Um, but also you should stop fighting in this tournament. But like, her dream's going to be realized. And then also there's this cult that's around this tournament. We don't really, there's some, last episode, some shit happened where like a spirit a very, like, I couldn't tell if they were, like, coming out of the person because they had control of the person, or if it's, like, a stand thing, if this is a little JoJo-y, and they've got, like, a stand, like, abilities, or if it's, like, Hunter Hunter, where they just have powers. It has not been explained. It is not very clear. Uh, but there was some shit going down. There's some sort of cult thing happening, and this guy is part of that cult, so... We find out he's there for the sword and for, uh, and apparently she is going to, she's important for this thing. Apparently, uh, Mira is important in the grand scheme of things, or maybe she could be important uh, to it. I don't know. We don't really know exactly what's happening there, but that's what we're getting from this. Uh, anyway, dudes break up the wedding. It's not going to happen. This guy freaks out and tries to attack them. She gets stabbed. Uh, and, and hurt, and then she's like, don't worry about it, and takes care of this dude. He steals her sword. That's not a problem, I guess. It should be, but it's not. I don't know why. Uh, she's something you know, like, that's not, you know, my father's spirit is inside of me, not in spite of a sword. Okay. But he had some abilities again. We don't know what's going on with these magic abilities. Uh, meanwhile, our karate dude, uh, who seems pretty cool, um, He's supposed to be facing her, uh, and uh, he's fighting because he is trying to get money. Because uh, you you win this tournament and they you get your wish granted, which is vague and probably people shouldn't be taking seriously, but they are. Well, his wish is the money to help his friend, who is uh, terminally ill and has a lot of treatments and stuff, uh, and, it, and it looks. Uh, very bad. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, Hunter Hunter is the name of the show. The X is silent. You would, in some instances, when you see an X, you would say cross. Uh, like, uh, like there's that, uh, there was a Street Fighter, Tekken cross Street Fighter. But in the case of Hunter Hunter, the X is silent, and it's just called Hunter Hunter. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, the the. Uh, I like that you're like I bet you like a couple minutes ago you're like wait 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 I just realized what yeah it's not Hunter X Hunter it's Hunter Hunter. Um. Yep, there you go. Um. Anyway, our dude is raising money. Uh. Who's trying to raise money for his sick friend? Just kind of snapped and fought really dirty. And you can see that Myra, who had that cut, instead of respecting the fact that she had been injured and fighting her fair, he apparently, we don't see a lot of it, just took advantage of her injury and just mercil mercilessly attacked her because he is, even though he's made new friends, 
it's not about the new friends. It's about his old friend that he's fighting for. So our next thing is going to be a finals with a character we haven't seen really yet. We saw a little bit earlier fighting our main dude who is now motivated to beat up his other friend. I guess uh, he was excited about fighting both of them. He wanted both of them to win because he wanted to fight both of them because uh, he's very main character of a shonen. He's, he's like, oh, I, I joined this tournament to fight tough people and meet cool people. He's here to make friends. He's literally in a deadly martial arts tournament to make friends and to fight strong people. That That's his deal. And he, is, he has. He has met some very strong people and fought, and it's been fucking cool. Um, but yeah, uh... But it is it is a, a kind of a it's a silly show. I, I like it. Uh, right now, uh, yes, in high school, they're also all high school students. Aristophan, they're all high school students. There are some people that. So here's the thing: while there are high school students in there, and the show is called God of High School, there was also a professional wrestler. She was a a professional wrestler, uh, and they did the thing that I dislike and I believe I mentioned this before so I apologize for uh, reiterating my my thoughts on this um, they did this thing where pro wrestling is real and that's not I don't need that in my anime stop doing that if you want to have like oh I'm an authentic fighter have them be in MMA say they're mixed martial artists uh, don't say or they're mixed martial artists who became pro wrestlers but like don't tell me that this person's like, oh, I'm very tough and very good at wrestling because I'm a pro wrestling champion. And you're like, no, get out of here. That's not you. That's not that's not the thing we're doing here. Come on. It's just a pet peeve of mine. Anyway, got a high school. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, uh, I, uh, oh yeah, you watched the first few episodes of Misfit of Demon King. Uh, uh, yeah, Demon King Academy. After seeing some clips of the channel. Uh, kind of silly and amusing. Yeah, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna say. So the thing about that show is, uh, about that show is, um, there's been a lot of focus on the sisters, the supporting cast, and generally in these kinds of shows, you don't get that. Now, we may have finished off their story, and now they'll just be reactionary characters to what he's, what our main guy is doing, because there's a bigger story going on. And we're getting a little more of that big story in this last episode. But they really did focus on uh, the supporting characters in a way that is uh, pretty unusual for this kind of overpowered main character storyline. I uh, usually don't get a lot of that, especially early on. Um, uh, so that was that was actually surprisingly cool. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of... There's a... Uh, there's a show, I forget it, it's it's kind of, whatever, there's a show that, like, um, there's a guy, like, a bunch of people go over to another dimension, and then when they come back, they're strong, and they get invited to go to a school, because they can't go back to regular school, but they're clearly being used, uh, and a dude comes back that is off the charts, and people don't believe how good he is, and he ends up with, like, a girl that is pretending to be his sister, uh, and... And the basically the like the student council president, and then also the student council president's friend, and that friend has no character arc. That friend has that friend's only thing is that she is a lesbian, which is very unusual for a harem show. In that there is a girl in the harem that is not interested in him; she's just around, uh, which you would think would be in more shows that feature a lot of ladies in a harem they'll be like well that dude hangs out with really cool ladies i'm also gonna hang out uh which i think is like kind of unique i forget the name of the show it wasn't good but it was it was it was okay um but yeah i would say i would say like it's response to the various characters like the supporting characters um and what they mean to the main guy already is unusual, but like pretty diff different. Um, uh, overpowered main characters that no one believe, even though they have, ev they should totally believe that this guy is incredible. They, because the system 
can't deal with him, they're like, well, that guy's a misfit. Well, that guy's, uh, well, that guy's, a, you know, like, oh, that's a human with demon powers. Like, so I'm not going to trust that guy. That guy isn't going to be tough. Uh, that guy, th that guy's whatever. And you're like, well, every, everything that you've witnessed should lead you to believe that he is not fucking around and maybe you should be scared of him or, or at least respect his clear abilities that he has uh it's just always surprising that like there's very rarely are people just like well this guy is done poorly on tests but is clearly stronger than all of us so maybe the tests aren't right because they're usually not. Usually the tests are wrong. Uh, I'm always, I'm always, I always think about that in for uh, uh, a regular at magic school is basically the Demon King thing only, you know, it is just magic and he just has abilities that no one, like nobody respects how awesome he is, even though he clearly proves how awesome and overpowered he is all the time people are just like oh that guy yeah whatever you're like no not whatever that guy clearly rules i guess if i guess if there was a show and people were like immediately like oh this guy is is very strong then it wouldn't necessarily be as fun of a show if people were immediately like on board without important or tough some guy was I guess I guess uh, yeah I don't think I've seen any of these overpowered protagonist style ones or I saw one punch man so one punch man yeah is definitely going for a different thing one punch man is going for the very nature of exploring superheroes and what it means to be Superman like that is definitely doing a different thing this is um, uh, a regular and magic school, um, uh, a bit of, so it's not, it, it's not an isekai, but there are isekais with, that feature characters that are way overpowered, like how not to summon a demon lord. That guy is basically the strongest thing in the universe. Um, uh, so even though that's a, a, a isekai into a video game world, it's still similar in that like, this is just, I mean, a lot of isekai are that overpowered main character. Uh, but there are obviously examples of shows that are just like are that are like this. Um, Matt School is not an isekai, but it, it is the thing of like just vastly outnumbered me or outmaneuvered. Um, but like problem children are coming from another world. Uh, the dude in that is basically as strong as a god. Uh, and so he's just like never it's never an issue. Uh, some of the other characters are a little less overtly, uh, extremely powerful, but he is unbelievably overpowered. Uh, but yeah, that is definitely a genre of just like, guys you shouldn't be messing with. Because what? why would you do this? Uh, and they're, they're guilty pleasure shows, because like, you're never super worried about those characters. Because you're like, well they're gonna be okay they're overpowered and very confident and no one is not until like maybe at the very end you're gonna find a character that is actually as strong um but you're not gonna see that character until the very end and then like all of the people that have been supporting this whole time will like step up and he'll be okay uh like there's never a point in Overlord, which is another one of those like isekais, but video game isekais. There's never a point in Overlord where I'm like, oh no, how is the Overlord going to get out? How is Ein's al Ghul going to get out of this one? I'm never thinking that because Ein's al Ghul is always going to get out of that because he is incredibly powerful and never in, it's never in doubt that he's not going to be able to get the job done. Uh, there, there's not a situation where you're like, oh no, he could lose this. All right, so. 
it's mostly like the fun of the journey. Uh, it's also a bit interesting, Misfit, because he's supposed to be antagonist to the world, but the whole premise seems to be that he's not really wanting to be that. Uh, I mean, that's... So the the thing that's kind of interesting about that is uh, this last episode, um, there's a moment where he's like, I'm actually surprised that the world turned out okay when I left it, because he, like, sacrificed himself to, you know, separate the, 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 the realms um, because to kind of stop the wars. It's basically that he was a he was an antagonist of uh, the main character of this show would be the antagonist in another sh- series, but he was he grew tired of it and he grew to regret it and he wanted to see what would happen uh, if you know if he left people alone to figure things out. Uh, and now he's back, and it does seem like. Yeah, he's your your Dracula. Yeah, he does seem like he he left for the greater good, and he sacrificed himself for two thousand years because he can be resurrected. If you know the source has to be killed, and so far people have not been able to kill the source, so he's been able to. He was resurrected. It took a while, um, but it does seem like people, the demons, are like, well, when the demon lord comes back, we're gonna fuck shit up, uh, and that is not his intention. Probably his intention now is to like reclaim his rightful place and then also figure out who's been messing things up in his absence because things are not quite right. And then also like eat some, uh, eat some uh, uh, gratin, eat some home cooking from his parents who he's only known for a month, but has definitely like, he, I think he really enjoyed, yeah, mushroom gratin, yeah. I think he really enjoyed that month living with the humans and being just like slowly growing into his now body. I think he really enjoyed that time of just having people like fully support him and love him like unconditionally. He was just like, oh, this is pretty neat. Yeah, no, the parents are the best fucking part of that show because they are so supportive and so great. And they're even like, your first day, you got like, well, yeah, we'll name her baby. My name is this. And we're like, you could talk. They're not like, get this baby out of here. Um, they're like, oh, our child wants to be called this. Okay. And then, like, yeah, they're just very supportive of all the choices he's making. And the fact that he took them with him to the capital because they knew that he they would miss him. So he's, like, living at home with them in the new, their new home. And then, yeah, he made some friends. And they're just like, oh, wow. And then he's like, oh, do you have fun fighting? You know, was it tough? And it, the best part is that, like, obviously there's a world of demons and, and, and magic and all this other stuff. So, like, at a certain point they should be you would expect them to be like rolling with it a little bit, but they're still just like, I can't believe you fought all those older kids because in their mind, he's still like a one month old, even though he's like, definitely not. They're just like, Oh wow. You're doing so great against the older kids. You're so strong and smart. It's just like, what really fun nonsense things. Anyway, this like, it's weird to say that it, that might be my favorite show this season. And that's a, yeah. Because uh, I, I, here's the thing. I think God of High School looks awesome and is, is really interesting. Uh, the fights are really great. Um, and I knew that it was going to get like weird. But I would like to know a little bit about why it's gotten weird. And we haven't like figured, I haven't. Like they haven't like explored why it the it, the show is so weird, so I'm I'm a little uh, I'm a little eh about that because like I hope that there's some understanding. Uh, I understand why it's not just these are good martial artists fighting the show, but eh, I'm a little hit or miss on it. But like Demon King Academy, uh, Misfit Demon King Academy is just like fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think that like it's silly in a good way. Now I will say that um uh, over on Funimation. There's uh, Uzaki Chan wants to hang out, and I think that's a very fun show um, because also that show is a little like they're college kids, so like it's much more 
pleasant to me that there are like moments of like awkwardness between male and female characters uh, because because of their age. Like I'm much more inclined to be like, okay, uh, I mentioned that in the same clip as Misfit. Yeah, um, Uzek Shin wants to hang out. I think it's just like uh, it is a silly fun show uh and i've i've been enjoying it um because it kind of knows what it is it kind of knows what kind of uh show it is that it's like all right these people are gonna bicker because their personalities are so different and maybe they're interested in one another but like that's not the show is them kind of like dealing with each other and dealing with the world that they're in and then the characters that really enjoy goofing around uh and observing them and there, we still haven't met like we kind of met uh his friend a little bit like he was talking to him but we don't really know what he's gonna bring to the table but like there's a friend who's definitely probably nicer uh but we've met the coffee shop owner and her and his daughter who is just a chip off the old block uh but yeah i think it's fun i think like Episode two has a, like, I'm stuck in a bush and you can see my underwear gag that, like, is, feels very, like, forced and not great. Like, that, that's the only joke so far that I was like, come on, you can be more inventive than this. Um, the VR bit where she, like, basically hits him in the stomach uh, and then he grazes, and while in VR, accidentally grazes her boobs, uh, I thought was, like, and it was like, I don't know if I've seen that before. So that that that's pretty that was pretty funny. Those moments are pretty light though. So uh or uh in in how many times you see it. Uh so I do appreciate that. That mostly it's just like her really bothering him, quote unquote really bothering him, which is really just her teasing him for being a loner. But yeah, I think that show is cute. Uh, and then I'm very excited about also in Funimation. It was from last season, but um, we didn't get we didn't get it because of the uh, uh, the break, the, the hiatus that a bunch of shows took. Uh, so we never finished it. We only got like three episodes in, but we're the return of uh, uh, check that out. Yeah, um, uh, Diary of Our Days, the Breakwater is coming back, um, and that show started. Uh, like I said, it was a spring season show. It, it lasted three episodes, but then uh, Japan shut down um, basically everything, uh, which was good. Good for them to do. Uh, but it meant that we didn't get um, uh, more of that show. So, And it was just kind of getting interesting. Uh, I love a slice of life. Uh, I love the idea of a after-school club dedicated to fishing. I think that's like a very fun thing. Um, I think the first episode is a little rough because people that, so if you if your genre, if your anime style is you like Slice of Life's, most of the time Slice of Life start with like a character who already likes a thing or the discovery of a thing. They're like, ooh, I don't know anything about that. I'm going to come uh, hang out in your club and learn more about it. And you're like, great, come learn more about it. Um, like Laid Back Camp. H. Nadesco doesn't really know about camping, uh, but Rin knows about camping. And then Nadesco is like, ooh, camping. Okay. So it's like, all right, we're, you know, we're going to figure this out. I'm going to learn more about what's going on here. Um, but uh, in, uh, in Diary of Our Days of the Breakwater, she is scared of fish and, and the ocean and does not, does, 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 does not want to join this and kind of gets coerced into joining, I guess is the, is a, is a way of saying it. She does not want this. Uh, um, perfect camping material, right? Yeah. Um, so Diary of a Day's Breakwater is, she kind of gets coerced and tricked into joining it. And she's starting to learn about it and enjoying her time there. And we were just getting in there. We haven't even met the, you know, like all the characters yet. But the sporting cast is really fun. Her childhood friend that she hasn't seen in a really long time was was cute. Uh, there's uh, the her the second year who is very quiet but seems very capable. Uh, she's awesome. 
There's some really strong characters in that in that show. Uh, yeah, no, uh, laid back camp. If you need a if you need a show to marathon uh, during all of this, and you're looking for like chill vibes, oh, laid back camp is beautiful. Uh, there's no wrong way to camp in laid back camp. If you like solo camping, great. You like group camping, great. Uh, you want to camp uh, by a lake. You want to camp like you know uh, out in a field. Uh, you know, you know, like you want to cook on there, you want to bring whatever, uh, it is, it is such chill. Yes. So, so slice of life doesn't have to be chill. Like, um, uh, there are, there's a, a Kaku Shigato, which just, uh, ran last season it is a slice of life, but it is also, there's, dr- there's comedy and drama and some real moments of sadness in that show that are not uh that are that that like definitely make it not a chill show but then stuff like yeah like laid back camp uh or flying witch which is the ultimate in my opinion the ultimate a show where like a lot of fantastical amazing stuff happens because of witchcraft is also the chillest of it one of the one of if not the chillest anime i've ever seen in my life ooh 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 I love Flying Witch. Such a fucking chill thing. Uh, really old stuff. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I mean, old stuff is always good to return to. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Well, we're just about done with the stream. So I am going to uh, uh, say thank you for watching. I'm gonna, uh, and we're going to go and raid uh, another stream. Uh, we're going to go uh, uh, find uh, someone to go and... Uh, and raid because uh, we always end a stream with a raid uh, that they're, they're often not builders uh, because I don't unfortunately don't follow a lot of builders out there but I do follow a lot of very cool people um, and uh, we're gonna go raid uh, I think we'll go raid Mary Kish uh, I'll catch you again yes uh, ask you oh god Thunderbolt oh boy we built the uh, the uh, that Zaku Thunder from Thunderbolt with all of the incredible accessories on that. Uh, that was a strange, strange stream. Um, but anyway, uh, we're going to go uh, raid Mary Kish because she rules. Um, uh, Mary's awesome, so we'll go give her a raid. So feel free to come along. She's playing a game I don't know anything about, uh, but she often plays some really cool stuff. Sometimes she plays stuff that is spooky and scary, uh, with Nina, hentai PhD, but not tonight. Uh, oops, I forgot to do the words I need to do for that. We're going to raid Mary Kish, not just saying her name. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go give her a raid because she rules. Um, thanks so much for hanging out tonight. Feel free to come along the raid. If not, that's okay. Uh, Anime Club on Wednesday, Model Kit Building on Thursday. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you in the next Build with Bear. Welcome, uh, new people. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, old favorites, you know I love you. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.